this book, um, I'll read a little introduction, which is the text at the back of the book, so I'm kind of, it's quite hard to explain in a way, but um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of readings of this over the last three weeks, and um, yeah, I haven't, there's bits of it that I still haven't touched, so all of it, I'm going to read every single word uh, today. Uh, and it's, I don't know how long it's going to take, to be honest, but it could be, it could be like two and a half hours. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. But, um, when, when I get to page 54, if you look like you need a break, and I feel like I need a break, I have a break. Um, if not, we'll just go on through. Um, I want to dedicate this reading to Jacob, who's been very helpful and instrumental, actually, in some of the thoughts that have gone into this book. One bit in particular, which was kind of saved by a book and a long conversation that Jacob gave me. Um, and I want to say thanks to David Rashford for publishing it as well. And thanks, everyone, for coming, because this is not going to be comfortable. Also, it's going to be a video of um, this, this really beautiful boy called James Kingston climbing up um, on the world's tallest tower cranes with no ropes or anything. It's amazing. So if you have a lot of drift, that's the there. Um, so yeah, as an introduction, uh, hello. Um, this book was composed between September 2014 and December 2016. It documents the day-to-day -day workings of a specialist support service that looks after young adults with high-functioning autism and related diagnoses or mixed diagnoses. The text has been added to, edited and shifted almost daily, only at work was this all, all sort of on stolen time. Um, it's not chronological. His structure is a narrative that assembled itself over time. During the time of its composition, the service was transitioning from one company to another. And at the very least, this text hopes to highlight the effect the transition had on the individuals who lived at the service, uh, the ineptitude of the provider, and on a larger scale, the inner contradictions of private care. That is not to say that these poems are protests. They are assembled out of direct responses composed in the moment and later assembled into their current structure. Several writers and their practices became obsessive figures in this composition. They included Julia Christeva, H. Fail, M. Weber, Carl Rogers, Anna Mendelssohn, and the unnamed copy and content creators who provided the various training resources and directives handed out during working hours, and they're sort of dots around in this book. Express gratitude to the workers and residents of the unit who worked in tireless broken harmony under an entirely contradictory and broken regime. There are hidden exits. Okay, so it's called Click Away, Close Door Safe. The first poem, and this is the longest, but I'm going to read the first two. They're both monstrous. And then the third section's lots of short times, and then there's a long one at the end. One. I used to love to work, to come inside here every day, begin to move, and what that means, to assume a false beginning, is walking up a tiled path, a metal handrail grasped to either side, the sign at the front a defunct emblem, the company tag is bust. I walk along the tiled path for nearly seven paces. If it has been raining, I fear sliding on the tiles, and most days I think of a service user slipping up, entering first a door, and then another through an airlock, the first door. A white button at eye level, my hand reaches up and on a first attempt presses, finding no resistance. In the second pressing, I push from the top of the rubber button cover, grey, down, and find the hard switch. Feel it click to a distant shriek repeated. You appear through the glass. Both doors in the airlock are panelled and transparent, and I watch as one of my colleagues appears on the other side of the second door. There are two doors and an airlock space a metre and a half between us. The second door... The second one before me is managed by two codes, one on the outside of the door if you're coming in, and one on the inside if you're going out. One door, a shrinking through space, hatching to the room. To make some sense of what you see, the door is undisclosed. Once the person on the inside taps in the code, they open up the second door to me or the first door to them, so as to go through and not around. They step forward in the through but not around motion, two or three paces to open the second using a Yale lock, I walk in to the airlock, 
sometimes service users are on the other side, on the other side, the side, the second door to them, approximate to the first door to me, the first to me, the second to whoever it is that waits to stand there, the second to my eyes, sluicing through the glass, second first to movement in, the eye remain to entry to, the movement in the through space will come to be more crucial, two horrific doors, and even then to never have begun, one. She belies the second door, switched into the gastronomical gravitation. The humming pull of each door, the air lock lit, a sanction between them. Each movement is catalogued to be dead, or sure, or local, as she sees. You have been in an adjacent room, near behind the door, the body, and I am able now to acclimatise to levels of anxiety and stress based on whether or not you cry out my name as soon as I have entered through this lock in vanguard process of correction called a door. It is now 7.26am, and thus in accordance, I must not to pretend to have begun. Having begun counts for none of these actions. I step three or four paces forward, and turning into another door on the left, with glass panels, I take those three or four steps towards the door and pass by a window into the same room. The door lets me into it. My gratitude goes into the door. The handle by the architrave will hurt you as your entry fee, commencing with your body through the gap's totality. The total on your body wrapped in anxious burning sores. You fail upon its trauma, squeezing through the tired doors. Another door looms into sight, magnificently door-like. So much so it could barely be anything else. So your hand gets caught between the handle and the wood. Dull pain. Your service manager wonders wistfully if your stuck hand is an act of protest to somehow discredit his efforts. He locks himself into a chastity belt 3000 like a bald eagle released at a Southern Baptist wedding only to smash its neck on the shiny circular window in mock stained glass above the door. A door is a violent article of faith, a rigid compress of hinges and screws bordering you from where the roaring stops. Now dispense your fingers from their fist cluster into the code. First door to you. Sometimes it's locked to exclude, or it is unlocked, or sometimes it's wide open with a heavy pestle to prop it. On the floor by the pestle is a letter holder, purple with a black handle, and next to that the copier, printer, scanner, drive, scanner with four drawers for paper, and across from that on the 45 degree <coughs> facing wall is Kronos, the black box with a green screen and a number panel which my finger stabs at hitting out my low employed employee reference number 10022539 and at this point in my littlest journey to expressive life never could I have seen myself rising through the echelons to constitute the defunct I, this thing, exponent of truth, rising from my baseness into the day, against these tyrants, the moral hindless bastion of senses, I, that in my perfect care would wound upon the lives of those that stand in opposition, trust me. As the curved body and wrist between the horrible architrave and door, I could never have imagined the cut directory fallacy in an unsustainable environment to throw you out in sacks around extremities from door to wall then out, the ringing weather. Discussed strategies for working with you in the house. I wake into the night where my skin is scattergraphed over the sheets to make an itch of the left skin, to make an allergy of the dander scattered to bleed to bed, sucked into a specific, septic, eclectic, curving surface, as in waves, as in over the not the first bust of daily behavioural records or birds. Scattergraphs to track in daily motions or scatter the fingers in the door snapped. Scatter one finger over the... no. Why not a commencement of sprinkled skin and the buttons over your tingling digits like leaking milk shut? A peppering of square plastic blocks with painted numbers lucidly scrubbed like the tips fall out and decrease. These are some fingers screwed like a gluey mask. Glue snaps round your finger. Your finger snaps clipped. You are the kindest motion adhesive of dioxide. Someone on location fire key my lung off, off finger raw from the bone ataxia. The joke inside the funded boiler scheme is that nobody qualifies. When I am here, I experience extremities of joy despite the door, that object of cognitive disassociation, the dyspraxic hinge sufferance cloaked in a surface of burnt out love, fails life toxic to remain. Sprinkling into hand from cause to open cause, commence with rip onto plastic, the spending cuts to mental health are our disgusting public secret. Whenever or wherever you try to find them, their details will elude you. Friends from the public sector are doing better than me. The meaning of this is that there are still movements there. The private sector, and this is a generalisation based on feelings, doesn't mind being immobile. The subjects behind a private door are locked there. Michael Gove convinced you that he meant well. Now he means you have left. 
is a kind of a masticated jock with spinning hands. First assist. Fiona and Ute have a semi-regular office day in total darkness, hooded, leashed back to back on a stool of a humiliatrix, fumbling the, me the mottos in the dark assessment scrawl. The proactive strategy requires of you the total of blame forgotten, scrawl away the truths to make excuses, just as in the case of a vow to the world at large, to focus on specific area of support to curtail some of the more and here we come to a problem in terminology. First, we are told not to use the expression kicking off when we go. We are told that every behaviour has a function. The expression doing a behaviour. And we are told that someone suggests we describe behaviours done as exotic, problematic behaviours. Death drug to you open, possible changes to shopping arrangements. Medicines are to be treated like money. You have the right to refuse them. Shipping is the lifeblood of the global economy. Most terminally emitting sounds like this. Am I going to be sick? Are you sick? Were you coughing? Do I have a demon in me? Am I going to be sick? I said she felt sick. Do you feel sick? And was that you coughing? I will run away. I have a pilot's license. And when I flew my plane, the wing was shredded with lightning. The temperature was meant to remain below 25 degrees Celsius, but throughout September, it climbed as high as 30. Heat rises through the unit. Am I going to be sick? I can't be sick. I can't breathe. I need space. I need oxygen. Will Trump be the next president? What are we going to do about Trump? My hair is a sign of hidden witchcraft, like Magdalene. Help me. Am I going to be sick? All those poor people in Calais, no one's doing a fucking thing to stop it. Right fist into head and table. The Hewlett Packard Pro 1, 400 to wobble gently as you do. The other hand to door, open to palm, with the heart of the palm, centred on the index, the side of the head. The ring sticking into it. Who I vote for is my personal business. I can roll under here. When is coming back? When is... When is was sick, is still sick, was the only one there for me. Hello, it's me. When is coming back? You storm into the room to announce that they are not coming back. Through your developmental schism, this is the right thing to do. But to me, it's an assembly of a monstrous power structure leading directly to self-harm. But we have only our management's example to try. Sounds drop in too fast to think. The active curator takes narrative components and shepherds them into a space, like the Peckham Storatorium, which is part of the big society that is already a forgotten district of thought. The trouble with these cuts is we can't know them personally. The exaggeration is their supposed lack of outcome, like my career. Your identity is your container. Your pronouns are, are spilling your mind. Start your anger once again. The woman in the Boots Care of Medication Foundation training module looks like Jada Franson from Britain First. Things are quiet here without you, but the cackling is fucking loud. The lorry drivers create a version of the border wall. The wall is made from an object. The human who suffers most can be made into an ending. When will you be taken? Fucking destroy every part of your entire life. When they won't tell you any of the figures, it has to be exponentially terrible. Behind their words is a horror worse than you imagine. Make the health service useless, then sell its body. Kill him, then sell his body. Kill him, then sell the body, then rent it out, then have it fucked again, then kill it. <coughs> this analogy is problematic. Hating social justice forever. Can I speak to... Still sick is he? Am I going to be sick? I've just been discharged from hospital. The light from the window is so blue, like a cave mouth, the open sky. I'm so cave. <clears throat> Whenever you speak to me, you speak of a pejorative we. There's no solidarity in it. That's the only means to your <coughs> guilt. My guilt is hauled back inside. I am the good object, my guilt the bad one. You are my superego. You are destabilising the gender gap, one hole by one. We agree to embark on fewer shop trips and some walks. Create a showroom and show it to you and see if it makes you more interested in the idea of using a room at all. A Vionetta, your dad leak, a leaking <coughs> nut inside it. But I must tell you, and have no way of doing so, what then, so long ago, when first passing through these doors that you were funded for a week, just to live for us to be there, for hours of intensive life, you are neglected. You've been standing there for three days and you are the entirety of beauty. So the blood in me, so the uh, our light of hope, doing our lives in silence by you, stumbling to keep this ship with you inside afloat. Add accusations to the risk assessment. Listeners are going to be quite surprised when they hear Jones' frank and sincere account. Kate, um, didn't hold me down, didn't 
come to me at the door, introduce yourself, to later complain that I drank your blood as a part of a ritual to reverse your gender transition with your mother. Another childish leak. There is a movement from A to B called life. Nothing to be corrected, less to be diagnosed. This is a reactionary speaking. A progressive speaks from the same regulatory violence, but with a torn out rib shoved knowingly back in. We are from the same place. Crush the divergent forms of, crush the Solidarity Federation on medication to stabilise mania, I, a function to the impossible and plausible mounts, was educated begrudgingly, 4LI5F3C, JBKA slash S, lot on training, doesn't cut focus on the natural consequence, snap lamented health, ensure the erasure of punitive approaches, the incentive is the reward, the disincentive its lack. Introduce and imagine the natural consequences of refusing treatment for health issues or personal care. The phenomenon is called codependent institutionalization, and it belongs to the managerial techniques of Carl Rogers, the humanistic psychologist with whom I've developed an unrelenting codependent distrust. <laughs> the only reliable hinge of that distrust is based on the teachings of the Kant's cultural guru, Alan Watts, who said, quote, you can't love on purpose. You can't be sincere purposefully. It's like trying not to think of a green elephant while taking medicine which I take as a slur against congruence. Rogers, unconditional positive regard, do that. <laughs> but Rogers isn't a problem, just a strategy. The hatreds I've developed are entirely degrading. I can't do them on purpose either. Where and when is sleep occurring? These were the impossible proactive strategies we were set against. With absolute positive transparency, we would march into summer. We would enact our frontless wills upon your tireless being. We would draw up new documents on a damaged life, refusing to refine and resolve itself to the enemy world of laws and symbols. The imaginary was banned. If you don't move, we won't move you. But soon you have to get out. The country shook like this, the category of this privation leaking under new entrepreneurial therapeutic scepticism. How their life be took and how they take it. Then as Kronos, the biometric clocking register. I rest my right finger on the print reader and either it bleeps in satisfaction or lets out a dash dot dot, which means it's failed to scan, in which case I try again and again until my chances are through. Then I can rest my left thumb on the reader, a secondary option in case of error. You get through until the reader was fucked for a week and the lift was broken and the emergency radios were gone and we were understaffed for over a year and you were leaking in the low drops of paranoia, anger and loss, the lactic light and that slurred around the building. But when Kronos, the biometric clock in register, was broken, attendance monitoring was slipped. It was fixed that very same week. Except for that small bit of time, that is what we did. If my index didn't work, my left thumb would. Similar disjunctions in concern are thrown at the front of the building. A £70,000 refurb which involves scaffolding, faces in each window, near a typical destabilisation forced in, as you would leak and rage at a loved one's death. Abstraction from the unit's face to work against the mind at rest. The walls are tested like the doors, enshrined. Then you go back to the rotor or the message book. The message book is a navy blue rectangle of battered irritations, the sides and corners are frayed, the message book a cacophony of panic, desire and blame. It resembles me, I think, as I try to scatter and pick up these communicative dents, sprayed skin, sprayed snap glue, gapes, finger to code, rough. They dismount, mouth cut and snap out. Words appear. They are contained, I remember, in a navy blue frayed A4 Lyrico pad. I trawl and stalk through, unhinging bits of sick from the plastic nose bags of my dioramic lobes, stuck and trawling for communications. Faint the lines of paper set at the industry standard distance. <laughs> the pages are thin, and some have doctor's notes tagged on with staples or tape, making some of the pages weighted, resembling us. Our scrolls appear underneath each one in recognition of having understood them all by rote. Sometimes a soul communicates annoyances in short and sharpened bursts, each signed off. Short persuasions. Today I find myself hating the book, hating its substance and its content, which I feel has to be the substance of its surface. Descriptions of trauma, descriptions of bad practice, notes on misconduct, notes on notes not properly completed, demolitions of effort, communiques of fear, attempt to ordering, closures, requests to unlistening eyes, fear of attack, sick, sick, con, door, 
Assuming the second one by the floor and walk through ash in door to door parallel duck and rotary which stuff moving inch forward around and don't run around the house but broken make an inch you worse questions of analysis and back to the dispenser situated to the right of the second door of the airlock burning the name I give it the two doors with two locks and two codes for the second door as you go through that second door to the right see the plastic dispenser white on its top layer with a backing wall attachment in grey I can't for the life of me remember its branding filled with anti gel the smell of alcohol I can't for the life of me however much I rub it into the carbon paper make and keep its smell it evaporates fairly fast on contact I rub skin to skin to sheet the very inch into it in an entry and a compulsive intervals throughout the day and the last bit of it to remain unevaporated or as I sometimes imagine unabsorbed stays cold between my fingers details details you push the dispenser at the bottom with a single cut hand beneath and the gel falls in it into a pool made from skin whose bottom surface is skin and whose top surface is gel whose skin my skin seeing as I am there when I first arrived, the staff had been purged by an outbreak of norovirus accompanied by an ongoing battle for compensation sick pay that never came, as if to punish the germ itself, as if the virus, because caught here, was dropped in by a lacy hand, wait for the complaint to die and carry on by rope. Everyone's skin but grief, sick and shit, 19 through the door, nothing approaches to occur, a fold on the inside of the door, 19 disgust, 19, is it in the debilitating, is it in that 19 is a disgusting number. Flay yourself to tufts of nail, but the follicle is dotted, many hairs lurching from one pit in the skin, nails grow in your scalp. Nineteen, ne nearly 125 women last year claimed vouched for you once, but we fell out over them. Help, 19 fries cut in the child of dispirited protocol chucked up, up, up on you at the bottom of the stairs with two doors glowering in the 19 points of dry hygiene checks throw off the door forever 19 sick 9 sick team phase in the quiet had move to the door and action that going forward brink to passive brink if our resistance remains peaceful our remains will pin to a scattergraph this door is a nightmarish movement of feet and hands rolling up and down the glass in a rondo like Vianetta surface 19 Yazidi women are burned alive to leak by ISIS military for refusing sexual slavery. We discuss it. It becomes part of the day's timetabled educational program. I am not qualified to communicate, to debate 19 slaughtered women and evidence it is a meaningful engagement with the world. You said, quote, that they, don't ex they can't expect a good life living in that part of the world. I 19 cough to exaggerate that you, what is meant by that, I can't speak through an educational debate, forego niceties, 19 knows at nine stop, am I going to be sick? Are you sick? Was that new coffee? 19 of the closing on the architrave, the door a pistol of codes to lose via dolls assessments, the crux of the mental capacity act is the decision making capacity of undervalued workers, and so is the leaking world of the burnt skin of 19 women. Nine stalks nothing. There's a pick in the back of the door. A leaking wound for ceiling, the edging to the floor, composed to weld the roof in two. The architrave is made from wounds of choking for the careful side that situates the uncomplied to cruelty, ostensibly a door. Fuck life. There are in addition to the dispensers than the do, the soap dispensers and the toilets that door out pale green liquid anti back soap that claims to moisturise the skin, and in the Offices, there are bottles with pressed lids that squirt anti back gel, and next to them, large E45 dispensers, hand lotion to follow hand cleansing. I'm trying to let out an emotionless diagram of what the space is like and give you an idea of how my body and our bodies move about in it, day in, day out. And I can't imagine, even if I can see how someone else's body feels as it moves around the space or what that space means to it, I can't fathom how much more possible it may well often feel. <coughs> But the dispenser is wall mounted for ease of use and made from strong plastic lockable for security and comes with all the fittings required to secure it to a wall. Linoleum floors at last before the Care and Quality Commission gets here. But one section, point 19, point when they get here remains unfinished and that section is left with the black underfloor staring up in through space between the staff toilet, the hall, the quiet room. You let something out. When you've been subjected to abuse, you might probe it into your speech, taking each eye to gauge whether or not whatever has happened is of consequence. In the external world, you may take to be your judge, 
your barometer, and whether or not you should communicate what you're longing sometimes to scream. Perhaps that longing is so private, it rests on you with impunity. You can't see what feeling it means or is, so it rests there like a socket with its correspondent knee, labouring against it, strain upon strain. And sleep won't collapse, but comes. He scorned my attention deficit, and stared as the last one in the freezing shower scrubbed the dirt off me with my hands on. Some of the things we achieve are amazing. Things, by their defining nature, are possible. A thing, insofar as it exists, at least in being perceived as a thing. It existing means that by its nature it is possible. In fact, perhaps any single thing that exists has proven its possibility above and beyond the call of duty. It is more than possible by virtue of being at all. The claim to have made a thing possible is to claim the ability to create matter from antimatter, applied to the spectrum, which is why when the company handover took place, I was dismayed to find the new motto, aside from the motto, everyone has a voice, which is used to vindicate service users with selective or elective mutism, and to deny the existence of service users whose mutism is neither elective nor selective. The motto stuck on me via a bright yellow magnetic badge. The motto printed over a small bright pink backdrop stuck to me that as I move, moves with me, we make things possible. As part of the organisation, albeit a small part, I object very strongly to my part in the creation of matter. I object, but am I being too hard on myself? We yet resolve this, the inspection in April. It rained that day. It rained, but the wind was not moving. Why isn't the wind moving? It was flipped into the garden. She was there to get us up to scratch. But perhaps her perception of me being hard on myself by reducing myself at work to my work is the same as the hard on myself I am being when I feel affronted by being burdened with the task of creating matter from antimatter. Do you see what I mean? I mean, what am I for? Am I but spreading negativity? Am I adding something to the general joy that springs and, shri springs and shrieks from ground to sky the world over? Wouldn't it be perfect to be a signifier, a chopstick on wedged into an electric heater, the ergonomic posture chair burning in the <coughs> IT room or your office, the taps burnt water as a useless protestation, crackling and pouring black oily smoke to make you laugh? Happiness exceeds our use of the version we are committed to, the implementation of the actual world, the process rendered into possible. And to begin it again, the snow is very deep today, but most days you get up, go out in the dark, and you walk in the dark till the light comes up. The light behind in the trailing flotsam and ahead of you flowing over air, or in the flotsam which is all around from all the other people without light in your little precinct, you think perhaps it was early when the light was coming up, something like a triangle under the ground, a huge barbaric foundation as to that of the telecom tower spreading itself under and above the ground, just as our forms leak under and over. Every time you move or are still, it's there. You are leaking. You think to yourself, you are leaking. The containment of lives, this conservative sentiment of motion. Each sleep takes you closer to every movement you make that takes your sleep and makes your sleep a moving thing. The air is cut in birds, a moving surface, a moving sleep as it curves on ice cyclical, takes the silence done to your head, holds your neck in a choke on the chain, spin my head as the lid of the jar from the mouth that takes the disarming sleep, takes the sleep away, lid to lid, clamped in the ink. Slippy, oily eyes that you scatter and throw to the flotsam on the road to work and sleep. Thrown out oily eyes split back pleadingly. Or in fact, they reassure you because you see in them a sublime simplicity and never take them back. When all you want is what you know. That this, the bed order, an indestructible object placed like a throne in the cave. Announced as a piece of giant violet brick. And to wrap the window in mirror plastic stuck to the outside destroying sight entry. Or to leave the door within the perfect 10 minute window where you stop in the road and stand there. Where you stop in the road and stand there, starting grimly to rot of the toe. That the journey from sleep to the place of work is startling and complicated. You want your chucked out eyes to look on in sympathy, understanding the hardships of everything which is simple and slow attributed vacantly to humans. Seven angels are encrusted to door to possibility. I hurl this lament where the possible is lost. No horizons, no substance, no life, no single things. An elegy for leaking skin, a song of neglect. The primary is death, the removal of life force and body from narration. Consensus, 
privation to heart, to no eroticism, to containment. We may forget what we do, the blank air, the dead. That's one poem. The next poem has a, a, a quote at the beginning from my own. I went through five managers at this place in two years, and the last one was quite special. It's got a quote from him at the beginning of it, which is just uh, going forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's also got a quote from Julia Christopher. <laughs> Two, the body must bear no trace of its debt to nature. It must be clean and proper in order to be fully symbolic. And if there is expulsion, and if there is gas to the face, to the ear, each symbolic rhetoric is a lamp, is loss, and social gap, baked in light, sexy, dried up, empty skins. I, your stomach rot, are your face in blood, <coughs> floating on water, law, oh, shining. Mm. What is expulsion? What is the start? What is tenderness? What is perpetual? What is healing? Solid blocks of language huddled into tidied strips to progress. What is hurt? What is holy? What is that cannot be? What is that cannot be undone? What is done? Leaked to us? What is had? Leaking? What is that cannot be that is? What is a region? What is abuse? What is neglectful? What is a ligature? What is swapping the key in the lobe? I rate in century, the whole lifeless schema. You somehow forget to awaken from, or now forget to awaken to, since it's somehow gone, and what is chapel perilous? In a lilac collar, not but somehow in a palliative support model, for palliative, also decorative, in a lifeless world such as ours, where the only thing to be closely right reliant is your loss, is my loss of you, the collar, the shrine, the operative. There is a chain leash anchored to the altar, it went from the hook on the altar, where it is locked to the hook of the padlock on the collar, and I was on the floor in front of the altar, facing away from it, half kneeling, half sitting. There were five candles and poppers. When the directives to remain are here, but a plush room descends to hold me. What is a care hour? How does it differ? Crisis, laughter. When I don't want anyone to see me, I've 66 milk, I can roll under here and can claim this, living, sceptical, elliptical, harassed, ACAB, a bloodworm, surrender. And there is expulsion, and there is gas in the face, the mouth, sight in the ear, smell in the eye, touch in the nose, the order of symbols, of knots, of patterns, and T-white nine you, and then stop, sound, stop it. Tenderness, words, actions of private terror, removals of, of words, nice questions, a world not made for you, of words in the eye, of sounds in the nose, to the touch of sensory expulsion. Enact. Deflecting back into the symbols, gently placate our tiny domestic <coughs> history without end, for no reason. The depths that cancel our existence. Since the first manager, he who made me what I do, there have been four. One was so much an extremity of absence and crisis, she remained for a month. And what happened next is this. You are promised a rodent. My cage is in the shed. The rooms are dust on fire. Then it renders to remain, remaining in the neck. The scar is not the same as the rebate buffers. Under the rim, professional dogging of the scar in your teeth, that her packet. Under that, the gentrification of Hatfield. Under that, the Hove space program. Under that, the pyramid of wedges, sticks and twisted paper. She would stick them in her ear like a smell, whilst the eyes listened. Alone, the hands tasted, until finally, under you, following on the, after that, there was under another, who was a convection, a sea ram moor. Where the last was a crisis, this one tensed as a valiant dislocation, imagined to be under the constancy of an impression that soon you would be killed. Under the ear, flat flat to the door in a fond life, galloping fags condensed in a neglected breakfast. Three reasons why, why you won't walk with you. Shut you out. Burn regimental proportions of the Windows Haulage Compliance and Com Quality Commission stuttered and shut groups to think. Now go to someone you begin obstinately to trust by the mere implication of their title. Become in awe of their structural authority. Take promises out of them. Hatred is the subject. 
the lifeline to terror and hatred rushes, and then in care, hatred pupates, condones, carries. The stations of your body, the stations of inaction, latent, are my eight central nerves. The sounds smashed in nose matter, unctured worlds, fall out, prop up, hatred. Inaction is perverse and destructive. These punctured mouths, doors tight to body. The door crams up on one leg equals door. Stack permissions. Doors, page 01134 equals cannot be done. Door is greater than dead. Door <laughs> is greater than dead labor. Is less than bracketed hatred. It's the removal of resistance and, and, and shame. Stick. Here is a destroyed chance. The purge what they are doing, be given to understand a promise was fulfilled, now receive word that your goddess has fucked off, subjugate the remnants of your promise into anger at your staff. I should have had words of this, just keeps trying. The reasons I hate you flourish in the environment they are made in so we can barely breathe but are made still to stand inside it in the same rooms, moving in the same concentric patterns from door to door, file to file, sanctioning forward motion to oblivion. If we are still Neolithic in our 80s, let's hook up. We're trying to etch out our hatred for you. We hate you because of the things you do, because of what you are. What you are, we imagine, doesn't marry to who you are. That is a possibility which, for now, we include. We feel this possibility must be included because what you are and who you are are codependent. What you are proceeds from who you are, your history, physiognomy, ideology, etc., composed into a subject, not your own. An elastic possibility of the subject, lingering, latent, <coughs> and terrifying. Terrifying because in its latency, its immobility and non-emergence, it is already violent. What more when you become you, the subject of your own life, to act as we would better hope you could. What you are then feeds back into who, because what defines who in retrospect. As you become something, that something is subsumed into you. What, the manager, is inside you, the who that what is made for of. You are who you are. What you are is made of who you are. So what you are, who, who you are, what, what you are, who, who you are, you are. You are our manager. <laughs> the person whose job it is to manage not just us, but the building we work in, its occupants, ours and their safety, and most obviously, the business, which is contained within a nest of other businesses, managed by an umbrella business, which is in turn managed by a private equity firm. That firm manages down by buying the next one, by making, maintaining, and selling four businesses, one of which is the one we work for, whose business it is to maintain services, one of which we work for, whose business it is to support adults with high-functioning autism or related diagnoses to gain independence and live meaningful lives with as much independence as possible. You manage this unit. You face down over three minor levels and face up through countless levels. I call these levels the great mystery because I can't see their reality as closely as I'd like to. As far as I can see, it looks like this. Each service has a manager and a deputy manager. The manager is accountable to the regional manager, and the regional manager is accountable to a pantheon of hieroglyphs with swirling and deepening titles such as Head of Quality and Head of Quality and Marketing, who sits in the nest under the CEO, whose previous local titles include Divisional Managing Director and Regional Manager for the same company. And this structure is part of the cultural capital, the way the company sells its work. The promise that you may climb but that some of the managers and regional managers claim their pay is equal to that of the support workers like me, which is probably a lie. Pay slips creak open to us. Or the senior support workers, that we are not here for the money, often said during meetings in which bad news is broken, i.e. none of us are in this job for the money. The company sells its labour by the possibility of climbing through the ranks of the labour force, but their climbing is a kind of hazing whereby you prove you can take shit, give shit, and survive shit, and whose skills include healthcare, hospitals, change, this is from our CEO's LinkedIn page, um, healthcare, hospitals, change, see if we can spot the mistake as well, healthcare, hospitals, change, management, business, strategy, team building, training, business, 
development, coaching, management, mental health, performance, management, leadership, development, <laughs> organisational development, and recruiting. These skills screech above us like the stars. Take any one and place it next to another. The contradictions well up alongside the harmonies. You are what you are because you are able to create matter. You embody the impossible skill sets to head the impossible framework. You're incredibly lyrical. <laughs> The reason for hatred of unit managers is that their task is to translate this internal structure to us, but also to translate the structure above it and above that, to make the private equity body at the very top, just below the IMF of banks, seem okay. Truths well up because truths are emotional. Whoever is at the base of each one is the most at risk. But just above the base, and it really is quite a short distance from the base, there is a category desperate to detach themselves, to ascend. These objects are called managers, service managers, unit managers, branch managers, etc. There are some transient floaters just below them called deputies, but they are like balloons held close in a cluster before sale, before a mixture of guilt and obligation and quite possibly love or excitement, though not always, allows them to be freed from their clutches of their seller's hand, only to be tugged into the hand of another more volatile human, a child, who could at any moment let them go. But the object called a manager understood this and found a way around it. The way around it swathed in mystery. It doesn't do what it says. It doesn't do what it says it does either. It doesn't rise like knowledge in a tree. It gets itself dirty. It cheats its way. It lies about its figures. So long as you are happy with it, it will keep you, which is how you discover how lucky you are. And it may persuade you over and over again that you're all in this together and that you're all doing the right thing. Every now and again, it will seem to have done something really cruel. What's actually happened is far worse than a mere act of individual cruelty. When you stare up there, there are several stratospheres of ownership. Personally, I look up to see my company nestled alongside four others in an umbrella company, which is in turn owned by Advent International, which is a private equity firm whose sole, sole purpose is buying other firms. Firms that have perhaps failed or are failing to do as well as they should, but that brim with the potential only a well-earned kick up the labour force slash service provision can instigate. Advent is an agent of salvation, which is dependent on change, which is here defined by Terms and Conditions, Welfare Edition, March 2012, London, uh, as follows. Change, invoked in a general unqualified sense to consecrate as natural and inevitable a particular shift of power in favour of some interests and against others. The naturalistic alibi gets more persuasive as one petty interest strings together a series of coups. It's the way the world is going. You can't turn back time, so you better adapt. Where particular change can be passed off by its partisans as change in general, resistance to their next move is made to look like defense of an insufferable past. With this understanding, as an act of individual cruelty is actually a fairly pathetic act of self-denial, the manager coming to defend his bold decision is actually following a subordinate line. The manager might really begin to wish that the decision which will be enacted was really made by him, even if it's an act of cruelty that will cause him to lose sleep, cause his relationship to break at home and at work, and even cause potential action against him. He wants to take ownership of the decision because he knows full well it wasn't his. He has been taken into a world where the possessed, whatever it is, it really doesn't matter, is to be cherished above everything else, even moralism, his crook. Being seen to not be in possession of the decision is an insult, and we would do well to mock him for it. And when the devil hath seen that they have set so little by him, after certain essays made in such times as he thought most fitting, he hath given that temptation quite over. And this he doth not only because the proud spirit cannot endure to be mocked, but also lest, with much tempting, the man to the sin to which he could not in conclusion bring him, he should much increase his merit. And we have bolted to the wall. We're almost half on This is the compacted spring through your open face. <coughs> But spring came very early, and now that you've gone, the empty room, 
the unilogical, the torn up and, and dismantled strobing back and forth through the body, the convulsive pupating night, Catherine Deshaies, Bridget Bishop, Elizabeth Clark. The torn and unpiled, oh, um, futile act of I balance innates of through and back and circles, circles and passing, pitch to the bliss of gone. Little room, little movement, perfect arc of arms spinning up to eye paradise of the sky of movement and of eyes that touch to eye skin, that peels imperfect eye spasm, that gaping monument, that hardly imagined life. Return now to the history of this passion. Manager the third's last chorus was to call in staff members for a disciplinary meeting over sick days, boasts of working through chemo as the basis of her lack of comprehension. Sometimes I lie to you, she smiled, but her boasts were gags sucking air through their sides, a kind of mucky proboscis only half painted, or painted well and smudged into an undry mouth, causing both to blur into a mass of hair, cheek and tubing. She chuckled at Mam's annual review that she'd usually managed to blag it. I wonder how many institutional violences were done in the name of that blagging. I thought of you, whose social workers declined to answer the phone, who spent nine years in a unit, four past the dot, whose carers in the BDU would threaten you with Broadmoor, blagged, your consternation be the rot of, flagged in disassembly. I am given to imagine the regional managers as the further evolution to unit managers, but there are differences. Anger used for coping is generally most beautiful. When anger pretends it can cope, it becomes less dangerous. My anger with you stems from our inability to live in the same universe, in our correspondent forms. Our differences, all our differences, are more prevalent than our likenesses. We are all here emphatically angry at the fact of living alone. This is not a universal statement, but a bourgeois one. A universal statement is grounded in something I can't touch. It probably contains more ineloquent language than is possible from here to express, or even to feel. I feel with my nose, I hear with my mouth, I smell with my eyes, I taste with my hands, I hear with my knee-jerk love. A unit manager, first of all, could be a number of things. A worker with a penchant for the sanctions in its function. A breakage in refusal of a loss. A vitae in the making for the taking off our end. A lamprey with a mouth of care for teeth. That care though it is teeth belongs to God. A voicing at the cusp of personhood. They use you as a relic in their tapestry for pride. Listing you as stories for to have themselves arise. <laughs> as the breaks of life responses do so elegantly rage. The changes that we rend will fuck you up but you were fucked already so you needn't be afraid you are rightly held in private and will stretch to be displayed a manager arrived who we loved his undoing was a temporary resolution to a problem we'd been bearing from the start but truly it was the kindness fucked him for some reason not many people want to come and work here Perhaps it's the wages, perhaps it's the absence of forward motion and training. Whatever it is, we were understaffed for over a year. The new unit manager, number four, came in on a temporary contract. He saw the problem, that there weren't enough of us, and he introduced agency staff as a temporary solution, seeing that our on-shift staffing levels were preventing days from taking place. This is how to throw money into a soul. Extra bodies who cost more. An agency body costs more than my body. You have to pay someone else for the loan of the body and then pay them so they can pay the body itself. My body costs them less than that. And besides, says my enigmatic fascist phantom therapist, I was born in the wrong body, trying to coax them into another one with meat. Our new manager brought in agency staff because he is a treacherous asshole and must be banished to the remnants of his kindness. Obliterate that. We were told the job was still doubled up there with its hands pressing its cheeks open to prospects who gaze in. They saw a man who's shorter than I am walking by the sea with you. You were talking to him about your brother. Your brother is out there sometimes, I think, perhaps over the water, because you fully comprehended the violence of management hierarchies filtering down to managing your damage to less harm. An enemy amongst us, G970, throttled a 32 on the cusp of a weakening to a career development scheme involving a 0.05 annual pay rise and £50 high street vouchers as backdated in one year within enemy lives do not matter. Oh, for five years of loyal service, rewards eaten on a scale amending to the... I burn on a candle to resolve its wax onto whoever the fuck it is runs the shop. Who particularly is involved in that particular ravaging of that particular part of the public sector? Where do they live? What movements do they make? 
What is their driving license number? Do they have any children? Any special romances? These are police checks. On what terms can justice kidnap, ransom and slaughter them? And how useful can they make the extermination or threatened extermination of their life stick? We all know that by extermination, salvation is birthed. An enemy amongst us wrote to me last night from your room, the last on the planet, and you said that your friends are falling to pieces. I couldn't speak about it, was too tired to speak, but even closer, someone is trying to kill my life. They've taken fucking years. They took more in the tokens of anxiety before that too. We are extremely afraid. Did you know that your brain leads you to more right-wing sentiments when you're approximate to anti back gel dispensers? <laughs> Incidentally, the turnaround of managers that supervise the region is not far from the turnaround of low-paid unit carers. They come and go and switch their, their manic faces like the doctor, casting at us falsities and shit. We wonder how in faith we might with tenderness support them. The things your type prioritise are shit more than I know. But the things we can achieve together are amazing, like curtaining the hallways or hammering the sky. In the meeting, the regional manager feigns disinterest, not quite disinterest, more of casual ignorance for general displeasure. Nobody likes to feel hated. A squad of suited estate agents attack a class war protest outside the house of Boris Johnson. Nobody wants to feel hated. Her hair looks like Trump's glued on, Trump's glued on a Norman helmet. But let's not get too personal. <coughs> we are told that the unit manager, that Mr. Fucking Chips, who stopped the war, is to be gone. We are told the reason, which is this, remember it forever. The reason. Um, we need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. We need someone who can take the business forward. You move forward. You need something to make attachment ricochet. You do not move. Now you inch forward. Now back. Now you're 19 years old, inching, always gently forward, then back again to the abstraction that is your movement begins to neglect itself, then to neglect everyone else, then forward to yourself. You leave. You want to leave. Nothing could hold you here. Then more cuts. Then less movement. Then you mop up the cuts. The cuts are the benefits for the private sector, obviously. Then you cut it open. Examine the inside. Then the outside. Throw the money from the inside at the outside. Then a specialist unit. Then you do a behaviour. Then breathe. <laughs> A service user and their mental health is mentioned. Trust is mentioned. A physical incident, a very violent one a few days earlier that was possibly in part cajoled by the leaking of this news. How are they going to cope with change? That question does not hang on. It goes, this is you and this is what you can achieve. Your full potential is not abstract. It is something only you can do. So plan it together. You are so good at being a person that being a person through the peak of our endeavour is never better than I think could be. So do better. I have congruence at you. You be broke over firm drill to the bag of its remaining cut out. We dutifully reassure the regional manager that our fears countenance you sent. We dutifully bent and root and harm and of harm and of harm and of hatred. Stained on dispat door one, a meeting proboscis. Door broke on sight to second door to, to me, the second second door to grim lips. First on ninth degree hoop of one door spin set of our dance door monitoring system, word door one in airlock site present to door two, or two, intensity scam door, oh. mm. you of second door is broken <laughs> in pain, out little res, oars swing out for advent international, in pain, at, flat to the door, two, you stare at stuff, uh. Faces one to next door, duster and cluster of frustrations and distrust have nothing to do with the new unit manager. We are angry at the decision. We are sad. People are leaving. The one thing. That's why I'm pleased to confirm that from the 1st of April we are introducing our plans to implement and exceed the national living wage across all of our services to properly reward our colleagues for the incredible job they do every day. Split GMB membership by the gills. Populate the risk in a scatter graph. I am the fucking wage gap. Deal with me. <laughs> Incantation. We are an specialist unit. We provide an specialist service. 
we pay our national living wage. We give you our terrific honour of personhood. Rolling gently right to left to left. Leaking gently right to left to left to right on fire. Leaking, smelling gently side to left on side to side. They rage in you and teeth to leak like skin and fire from side to side. On. And now that I know that I know not to get out of where there's nothing to get out of, but I do. Upstairs, outside the meds cabinet, your mouth appropriated beats out rain into the wide berth of hair in a pyramid of nylon. Then somewhere else, watching the sky frame a complex gyration, each victim piling into the next, priced into a toxic pyramid of fearful desire. Stare carefully into the frosting window. Song tips, asking your parameters, begging them to stop. Being what and as they are now, I miss you because you go. Glue traces on the elbow of the wound in our creepy head. Hatred of corpses, click away, say closed doors, say. In an incandescent stress, your dad, the pervert estate agent, washes his Milo. Debate done right. I won't pretend then, then to not understand the reasoning behind the upper middle. More than escaping into what we believe of you, wanting to throw myself into what I can know, to lose it, to make you worse. I would like hereafter to let out a futile mendicant proclamation of tangled up jargon, allowing every documentation to leave us without agenda forever. Behind nothing, but when I speak to you, only become singular, the heroic direction of the versions we present now to one another as no subject. A smile without my mouth on, but someone else's. Your lips mouths fornicate, stuck to the arse end of the corporate Carl Rogers fetish club. Congruent as flowers, total window of skin, no eyes. This, the blasphemy diminished as a constant and impertinent beating into the blank silence, always left but forgotten, invading sexual privacy with a completely open mind. Trails into the melon pips all the fucking time. When you've been a victim of abuse, you might drop hints of it into conversations to see whether or not the kindness you're getting from others sticks to you. If it doesn't, you may not go on. I make you make things possible. Do you feel the parameters fling themselves back and forth around your legs? The blasphemy you spoke of is stealing your mouth, as I feel as though holding it with this socialization might be an abduction to put on my own, reverse it, stare it outwards, so everyone sees your mouth when they look at mine, which is cut up in wronging lips and teeth, not, only, not the only dysphoric antonym. The rest of the body rages to take, for example, the wrists, the scraps on the wrists, the muscular toes, trust in its reaction, its recession, the obvious organs and cheeks, the ears, the neck, and the feet, not merely the toes, but each whole foot and especially always the hair it gets worse from the wrist to arm top every time it's moved back are you resisting the forces of nature yes or no enforce this body politic into a whole position of mindful or anti-mindful exposition and make your way beyond the airlock into your office someone's talking about you you can see her reflection in the pebbles note is taken disintegrates but it stays here hanging and oily all over the skin on the gusset in the bits of unthreaded lace and I remember being loved outside, how important that felt, how I would scream from every documentation and all this whilst horror evades us, all permanence and to its parallel life openly chucked around and drowned making our silence never cut to shit again, the sky, the hole, the spiral of legs, how beautiful we roll up into a pressure of knots, thank you. Actual possibility fled the building days ago. Feel rough plasterous at four o'clock to evade black rope prior to dictatorial visitation hex. <clears throat> and just under Anthony Head's head, which today I tapped to the wall of the office courtesy of Timothy Thornton to improve the morale of my friends, there's a blue thermometer case with no thermometer inside it, which gives the impression that tear might be eight slash A off me. Who are they? Gives the impression of a thermometer. Let's do it up to the right. On the diagonal is a white note, 17.5 centimetres on a yellow backing, 19.4 centimetres with the words leave and no other words. Mm. They're useless, excuse me, just a symbol of a relic of a catalogue of moments. Go and stare into the funds. The funds seem infinite and inexpressible and they seem human, as in they seem like they've been here a very long time, as in these funds, which are idiots, are devious. They're entrapment, because they mean unfreedom. In that sense, I fold into a Nazi. 
They pummel their genitals, pathetically self-attacking and distributing what could barely be called loss. I hardly demean it. Simply by replacing myself, the whole damn skin off siphons into a meaning. I'm staring into Ian Duncan Smith and want to pulverise his face instead as I watch service user after service user rot into the wood of the private arena, pummeled in gone therapies, taken, cognitive debasing, use creating, Ian Duncan Smith's face with a horrible rope pouring out of it. Tensile fuck. Burn for this evening to begin again. It does. In the low desk light you're humming through the wall, Rounded into a noise I yearn to be caught in, caressing the once pathetic instability I long, and that is how I am built, to call what's tender pathetic, to yet crave gentle lulls, to call them lulls, to be felt, to be disguised, to imprison myself by cool actions and jibes, to make it a fetish, a blurry open cyst without a lung, blinkered in the vacancy of loft space. I promise to be less like you than you are less like me than ever made us one. There's no reconciliation in death. There's none in life. There's no life left. I detach and scratch. I go into work and drag you along the floor with me, through the doors, the airlock, a sudden cheering lurch, welling, hopeful, your smiling skin. Is it possible to slice through glue? Say thank you, melancholia. Say thank you, livid scent. Say thanks to mandatory training. Say thank you, kitchen labour. Say thank you, CR02. Say thank you, supervision. Say thank you, horrible triggers. Say thank you, Venn diagram. Say thank you, 6am. Say thank you, PBS. Say thank you, departed friends. Say thanks a million lawyers. Say thank you, 50% more likely to consider or commit suicide. Say thank you, bug bedded statistics. Say thank you, drag from one task to the next. Say thank you, once jubilant workplace. Say thank you, eroding sense of care. Say thank you, teeth of managers. Say thank you for your change. Say thank you for your tiredness. Say thank you, fair exchange. The person-centred approach. The hijacked corporate antithesis of the communal. Okay. light, dried up skies, I, the seasons, I, your movement, I, this curtailed form on no or little movement, law, you tiny people must live for your potentials, what more, we will strim you positively, muck fills wounds, are they, you call them? Oh, strange, cursive, persuading, you of non-cognition suck through mists of the mind, positively frack, and think proactively, strategically, silenced. The air through this window, this mouth, a multi-ramic sphere, it catches us at its centre, point without gravity, it is massive, empty, and made of colours. It is a door, a lock, a compulsion of broken light. 
What are you? What are you? A hole in the broken slot. Click, <coughs> click away. Corrosive, not room. Corrosive, not stomach, not face, not kissing, not stomach, not a sphere of colour, not mass, not a not weight, faux solids, bombs, light halters, this sound. I returns, I stomachs, I not policed, I remedy, I owner, I forgetfulness, I not awake, not I am not, not I, not I awakes, I am not, not I twist, twist hair, twist hair of mine, growing darker, skidding listless at the ground, I, and the I maddening birds, jets and hisses. They, not I tugging back the air, they I cluster in I jets and scraps, these little I bastards slitting and uncutting, they <coughs> scrape and hiss, the oh I cut them, your eyes, massive I corroded, perfect eyes sing, I've gone, will droop, and then not rot, and then burn you in blank fucking air. It is not a thing but a place. Central fucking door, object of completion, of taking. The door is parallel to the eye, the eye to the form, the form to morality. They made us touch this sheet, the pathway to our stunting, made from corners. The corners made from fear, the fear from the larger <coughs> and general containment. The outside turned in, the inside remained. There were no great circles, no completions, new beginnings. These things are lies, impositions of made-up minds, invented protocols, a construction of neurotypical desire, the violence I speak from, hair, central canopy, eye pungent, corrosive adage, a broken, receding sphere of colours. A monument, though I wound so against, sound vanished away. Sound is flat, unhappy, not light. All these distant possible things. English sentiment, little towns floating back and forth below the cloud. A light that goes, so goes. In the strobe it terrors and tears at the cloud. And here are some things worth collision. Here is a burn to death. No, not I punish, not I collateral, not I love you. It is no longer a word, an insistence. <laughs> Jinx protocol, Jinx stomach. Stomach, you said mouth on stomach. You said kiss it, you follow up. You said outbreak, vile, invective, active door circles and circles and stop running around the house. New protocols of not circles and blocking. In this machine, a retching of parts, how we press up legs, <coughs> this bed of jilted in this machine's going full stomach, in this pith. Relax. We both and all leak. And here are some frightening thoughts. Care is institution. Institution. Prison, or near to prison, to education, or fraught, indecisive, the two. Institutions of care and institutions of correction, by which is meant behaviour, by which is meant step away from the door, move these objects, is alter them to the order of symbols, totally banned subject, subject to be hazed or incarcerated, indefinite, parallel subject, to make the incarceration stick, to in turn receive, i.e. to lose or abandon care. It means the language is vacant. It is stripped out and corroded like a wallet, not corroded, just stripped of flex, protection, or of blood. In last night's dream you were, of the cells unnecessary for survival. Either it is mere survival or it is slight reward, reward in gradual stages, pound by pound. This aversion to daylight, daylight exposure in small dreaded floods, noises, flooding, positive models, no more flooding, just flooding, day by day, bit by bit, salvage of corrections, exposed herself daily, constant to the formerly dreaded, lives in its dread, as one dread is surpassed by another, and those working up to this dread, fed there, 
they are very bored, they are very tired, they are very close to the edge, their pay is their care, their care corroded by pay and its lack. Wayward, spit, spirit, Elizabeth, go inside, let of you. Speech stretched, person centre, mirrors age, reflective of body, Irvis, sir. As a worm legs leaned I service uses uh, through washer, post cleanse to be evacuate the worm king, kiss the organ, push me down through myself, under the motto of curated health, push dryer, rise to induce leaking. Your beautiful body is leaking. My body is leaking. The motto of our wound is mutual, the labour of its transference, the whole institution pouring into the world, from the world, into the door to the airlock, three leaking paces forward, three piece, paces leaking forward into the wound of its transference, into the lock, the wound is rendered, the wound is broken transference, the whole leaking street, the street's leaking arch, its brow. The horrible smile painted the door. The door paints your back. Your front leaks its fingers into the code, distributing their movements across its surface. You cram your whole body through the tiny gap in the frame and are stuck there. Monologue. You. I have very little. <coughs> Keep a stock of tight clothing and a warm bed. I have a feeling. It slowly gained. Bottled water, a few split sips. There are candles in bottles, <coughs> pieces of wood, bags filled with lighter fluid. Such are these games. A side pocket, lighters, blocks, knife. In addition, the scope and intent, a hammer and some nails, some wood. All of the following. The bed, gruesome stationary mill, Green curtains, anything, everything to be fixed. I should keep myself. I got out and have five days, all the features needed to survive in the forest of words, to get through the fire escape. I am mouthing this. Evacuation and touch, only if you can lead me with a knife. I travel, <coughs> maps were stolen, out of the way, worn down, so far, I'm down, heaps, heave, a collapsing tendency, these nettled hands, small blades, itching. Come, O oh window driver, this frotted, compulsive conviction. But no one wants to work for glass, age falls, and bottled water fresh and good. Their return is oxygen in the body to fill every movement and every pair of scissors. It is important, but not the un- rusted people come to my room and they start to move the objects. I was too stressed. Stress tired in the case of hundreds of thousands ended. Those that were ended with shredded paper ready with bait may strain ended to move them to suspect these pictures were empty bottles and fitness ended. My cartridges do not do you see the tension lies beneath the perfect angle. You risk lying in breach of contract, of the contract according to your facts. You're tired. You are not perfect. I am always tired. That I should be prepared to be in everything. In fact, I did not perfect end. I'm always tired. Not tired. When nothing ended. Sacred. And I have logical fatigue. Could not be asleep for to forget your movements. For to lose my sense of the motions, and indeed, nothing in all that the fact that it does not work, is not the God of truth. This place has in fact not only to slide, no bait, I have no sleep, no sleep, I only escape physical damage to the lower cylinder bed. <coughs> I knew what network the temptation to bait, to bait supply to the fact that the damage was more than the supply here, I am tired while sleeping. Fact. Stress is not sleeping together when in fact there is nothing, as if nothing actually slept there. 
all the wrong moments moving fast and senseless as glue forever shredded together forever senseless and shredded together putting hand that I hands on your hair you're fixed and shredded together forever that I have ever bait temptation to put one minute corner under the bed one second forever you Rose was there beside me it felt gone as though the energies of care had been eroded turned from trust to a knot I cut the knot of these nooses not nooses we cut them up we left them by the window it is snowing it is not snowing the minute hand is shit the bed indestructible cave barrier the mouth the feet hears leaks a head the houses one a stair you travel onto a single step you put the hand on a banister and lift yourself supportively up <coughs> moving towards the sky you lumber into double steps passing the shouts and whispers that you drown to the funders gently need the dispensations of a mind basking in a breaking ultimatum this is due to the fact that the dislocated souls are now a tripping hazard detachment and its other split from what it couldn't make to make you what it cannot be you fall and in falling you split split to a double surface one at ground level and one in the sky you level down and are no longer allowed to be a heterosexual these are the old directives for effective personality change the new ones are these psychodynamic methods are to be mocked the peculiarities of disjunctions in the person-centered approach are becoming more undeniable the humanistic <coughs> being the regenerated object world of the psychodynamic emphasizing that there must be a transparent front all corporate environments in the West will one day bow down to mindfulness before the nearest cull. Watch out whose words your scaphism leaks from. Carl Rogers, 1902 to 1987, was a humanistic psychologist who agreed with the main assumptions of Abraham Maslow added that for a person to grow they need an environment that provides them with a genuineness openness and self-disclosure acceptance being seen with unconditional positive regard and empathy being listened to and understood without these relationships and healthy personalities will not develop as they should much like a tree will not grow without sunlight and water Rogers believed that every person can achieve their goals, wishes and desires in life. When, or rather if they did so, self-actualization took place. As I recite these words, I watch as you react to them. You look to one another, shrug and make noises. The noises are light condensed expulsions giving way, I imagine, to the word and as a question, as if to ask what is in fact wrong with what it is Rogers said or is but really simply said simply theorized what is wrong with that that not being a question what is wrong with that as a closed sentence just as what I appear to have done has been a closure it was in that instance the fault of my voice it is still in this instance my voice my voice has become a barrel of negativity what Melanie Klein might have deferred as a symptom is my voice a symptom of Carl Rogers no but Rogers is encapsulated in the symptom of my voice 
as my voice speaks its damage, so it itself damages. It turns into a tree without sunlight, and then turns me to a tree without sunlight. For I have felt the abundances of empathy, the genuineness of self-disclosure. I have tried its total and been held in that uncondition of positive regard. I have stared into your frontless right, frontlessness right out of your back. Current pop psychology leaves us as toxic. Why do you think Rogers prefers to be known for the person-centred point of view he espoused rather than having the approach tied to his name? What does this say to you about his personality? Guilt is abundant and I feel that I hate Carl Rogers, which I feel guilty for because I am aware that it is probably wrong to hate him. I even feel guilt at hating his position and wonder whether or not I am accumulating the pain of the people I am paid to care for in order to strengthen my position against Rogers. Perhaps he's my superego. <sighs> Calling across the other side, knocking against the instinct, then move yourself back, then pull yourself up the banister, then fling your fins through the door, then shout back at yourself for help, then run. Squeeze your smoking head through chaos. Hatred is not the summation but the practice of neglect. Disagreement welling up in front against tenderness. Nothing could be more tender than the chaos we inhabit, plunging your shocked expression through dormant layers of collapsed Rogerian damage. My summation of you is tantamount to this. Quote, when the child has killed the bad object in fantasy, the child feels instantly sad. It has just killed the mummy that it loves. This sad state is known as the depressive position. The sadness motivates the child to reintegrate the good object back into the bad object by an act of love. Hate slash aggression splits and love unites. For example, my son doing eye shoots at me and later bringing me some dandelions he picked as a present. We state the claim that the world is not vague. The world, the composition of objects, the universe, its poetics, is brought into life in object regard. Each object is related in surveillance to its other, you. We comprehend you in relation to the object. Your relation to the object proceeds from histories, its and yours but it's also interrupted by the relations working around and between the passage of senses to, between and from the object. The object bestowing its sensory sphere on you, you bestowing your arranged senses on it, and finally drawing it into the symbolic. The object has become a symbol, the symbol now the purpose of the object. The object symbol is the marker for effective personality change. The movement is through and out rather than down and in. Congruence is still a front, whatever you define as real. What if there was no such object as the imagination? Speaking to my transparent frontless you, I ask why my psychic knees are so often given over to jerking. Why is there always someone else to blame? Where did the damage of blame catch on to us? Given that I'm ordered against the Im imperatives of damage, I take that imperative as my aggressor and am not reassured by it. I become an excellent liar, and so I became cruel. I know I was afraid of you. It made my body rock and come. I can see straight through you. The institution. A door. I. Body. The privilege of chewing, fire door sticks, waits privately, the division of time, effort, the farce of return from the deathless abject, not I wonder who moved the bar, not I you can, wasps don't sting, don't bite or touch, no I help nice you, not I corrections, arrangements of bottles, the institution is no empathy. That social experiment I failed, all sucked and productive, all valued, all emptied to the sucking cars. Now I want to suck 
and swallow. You, in your cropped hair and braces, eyes stark, arrangement, pigtailed and skin, lace in the unexacting light. The uh, institution of not plastic or dick, or imagined, yours catching in the gag, leashed, coloured, not light eye, tied or tall. Decent, articulate mouth topped up, and you come over again in I over me over I, not worsening, I placate. Yes, I hold empathy, clumsy, unmute in the jaw, and sing. She is a bale, nameless slab, or slut, when we scream in the distance called I, public. We always shut in perfect hair, and yes, it shocks the natural voice, or no, it turns them into heads. Cuts out the supply, demands the use be I occluded, chud near paradise, hurt and bound, and sexed, unhurting, un shaming, full at peak in shame. And desire is stopping, and is not death. And desire is killing I itself too, and too close, and too solid. The stock that is the light moving close, closing the collar round the left of my eye. I, 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 I am, am, am empathy, foreclosure, error, life. Try the holding of in the stocks, head, arms, eye, distinction and promise, shot. At the roll the grill face pushes out, removed, let let back, bits of speech, drastic, lactic, propped still, rumour burns, houses roar, unenhanced pasta, mineral bubbles, dissipate, surface. The law <coughs> is not moving counter circles, one door to next, outside to in to in, must like entries, bite them, bite them. <coughs> the coding, locks, hub, pin, door, ants under, electrical shrieking, diced winnow, ban, Instalment the of hand drying plant. Then crash the car. Put on the headlamp, put upward, shot vent, torn to empty air. Air from wall, removing of bodies, our minds hive, rock about for one last. Did this too. It hurt. It finished. Flip redactor. Why mostly I come in sincerity, it is so. Public ear, mostly written here, in the distance called public, call into distance, you and imagine all these Sodoms, tactile neighbour, redactor, flip to position, kulat, one, democ, rat. I search, not I, you, searching for breeze, for doors, institutional door is a math of... In my friend Nat, in resistance to desk shop absorb, in absconding in our op work, elated injure, os time incident, fuck on time screams Nat, and this elbow, it arise I, I not seeing, all even pleasant norms of labour, injure dear one, list e and cape it, and somehow, physical kill, upper management, stratosphere. These are, by saying kill, is meant this. The position should not occupy physical space or imaginary time or any space in the triangle of symbols or outside it. Was sent, colony, revelant, arch, vile. Not, I, wretch on seven pounds whatever in a week in non-physical time is how I recycled. How in my throat do explain catches and words, Sylvie? HR remain my love to, and come eat a trough, come remain intact delicacy, <laughs> chaos rolling round the mouth, screaming round the snowing suns, the settled shred, a flicked out ear, motions falling and fading, and I'm totally bastard this shock, treatment at <coughs> is room your iron lung bound, what precinct made us understand not rotting faster than the human hands, and ride to ache you normal. I, it is love, my shame, my shame called back. The abject, not I, unsung, not face, these, that, the eye deflects, that the eyes reel against revolt, a primal force the eye deflects, the abject does not symbolise, mm -hmm. they does not move. She stands and never sits. He curses order, waste. Not I waste, mineral assaulting. 
impossible beat. Cast your care, stretching bereavement, impossible stain or pill, bereavement curtailed or crossweed. Don't dupe this man, sweet breaker. Silence falls in pale grief. Fists first and tight on the raining sea. The sea pours rain onto the flat sky. Turn the haggard key in brief agitations. Pride against pride. This head, mottled, caught up in shimmer, polars, and, 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 yes, be I fear catching. Yes, this still I work at. Face your eye and nail up water's roof. Then was the weather proved when I saw, when I saw it, broken hideosity of calm. A brain can be lived, that I am sure, over time, lived for, destroy regularity. Persuasions, you are this behavioural one cut into word order, now you sit and stay, now still, so still. Ended, removed, the language is a mind, is a body, is not autism, is not allowed, is the language a body, the work of its take, it isn't rendered and arranged into pieces to flavour the world, it is not a mathematical guise, it is not kind, it fills itself with jealousy, it is anxious and abused, it is not a tax, it is not a word, we there are not even worlds, there are semblances, symbolic proposals, <coughs> arbitrary distinctions, they are not all environments, people, people or multiple of worlds, just squares, just stay between the lines. There is not a birth, there is an outbreak. Welcome to dysphoria, pretty. There's nowhere to stay. It is not it is not lived but my frightened enacted body becomes body brother of hurts four years fast enough the room fat and traditional my hands atop head fear is greater than rips up back and back flails and this has a happy resolve these lines and stare back i look into the upper the lower here perfect yours incline towards cross the <coughs> arms on crop or nape banished head to wall banished wall to floor completely fucked fear cuts gently on the back to the back to the corner where it lies and shame with oh it stays the corner where desires light the wall up young the corner, shame, I, I call back, a, a brain is not yours. But you break the sides off, the sides were always slants, made out in plastic in colour. You broke the sides and the scissor. Mindfulness is agreeable, its characteristics vague enough, expanding us like breath expanding. You are choosing not to speak, so build a tree. I wanted to get better. I was told to and got worse. Worse a subset of longer, longer a subset of birth. I can only experience your behaviour, of your experience of me, of me, of you, of you, of me, from birth to death as you come into vision, whilst the me that seeing you revolts experiencing of me until we move. And now the room is revolting. Don't leave the mock, the scorn with us, the micro we hurt. The looming empty foot sang to me last <coughs> night. I felt it. There goes the foot. There goes the house. Last night I couldn't sleep. I was very glad when I saw you had fallen asleep. And I was very glad when I heard all these eyes closing. Eyes everywhere falling asleep. And the eyes were over the water. And I after I fell silent. And they were counted and closed, counted and closed, counted and closed. Sometimes when I need to sleep, I listen to someone's voice. And I reach out to whatever my mind can imagine. The wind. I lay there, and your eyes made a closing sound. And your eyes snapped back and forth behind their lips. Pop, pip, pop, pip. 
there seem to be endless flotillas of women of different ages compacted into agonies and boxes, working themselves dead. No, not that. Snapping eyes, being worked to death. Only you weren't hearing it. Your eyes had gone. Every dream was thousands of bodies crushed and stamped together, all of us writhing and twitching. Eyes bolt open. It's raining. I don't want to walk with you alone by the sea. Sometimes the sun is there when you wake up. It goes into your eyes, a jar of water, a helpless moan. The clamour is disgusting. You move through the stations, lie there, not speaking. Constant clamour. I become ruthless, depth charge, heretical blame, charge of flags, then go alone into the sun. No. I do not want to walk through this door, to stay inside that door, to remain out here between them. I do not want to have no more. I want to see no one, to be alone, anyone, everyone, my time taken or given back. I hate the cold and the heat, the scabs and ridges, wrists, t something back something gone, no returning, no extending, no doors and every door, sick of, sick of what, take me away, take back my time, my agency, I want it gone, was born in the wrong body, the wrong world, its climates cannot drop out of, what is the eye body, hey, <coughs> energy, I watched as you burned to death. The crowd was enormous. They shoved you again and again. Someone kept doing something with a shoe. You lurched up. Your chest and thighs and groin were burning. The fire destroyed your shorts. It took the front of your top away. The crowd who had been baying was suddenly still. Someone stepped over you. You were lying on your back. Your knees were bent and your feet were flat. I felt you were relaxing. I couldn't smell you. As you lay there, relaxing, a small fire engulfing your groin and a small one on your chest, somebody walked over you. The second time I saw you, the flames were gone. You were on the floor. You'd rolled to one side, leaning one arm across your one body. The one whose skin was in burnt stretches, shreds and blotches. You leaned over like that, again and again. I couldn't smell it. I couldn't smell you. I felt as though I could. You were leaking. But by the time I'd seen that happen to you, I was already in despair. Such a high level of accumulated anxiety welled up into a cluster of electricity in the corpus callosum that it began to spark. Trauma to anxiety, to respite in despair, obsessive through anxiety, to masticate your care. The sparks attach themselves to whatever they can, but soon they settle for things that are not near. They crowd the corpus callosum to overcharge in well-worn parts. Do they begin to seek out different things? You express categorically you will not adjust. So we spoke for another hour. I was unable to speak to you because you were speaking to me. We want to make you cured like Biltong, scorched for perfect saleable retention. We say, please remain. They were acquitted of murdering the rapist taxi driver through burned and leaking skin. First assist in its stolen Buddhist trap espouses the virtues of feeling pain at the end of a relationship as a PCP. That being personal contract pur purchase, progressive cavity pump, <coughs> prior comparative period, provision, criterion or practice, and terminally person-centred planning like this. To be present in your pain before its trauma cramps you in a stack of neurons bundling the corpus callosum for your dad. It may make it easier for you to come to terms with the thought. You made me think of something when I leaped into you 
and the word was Florida. To be left struggling with your self-esteem, splitting its seams into realms and categories, almost all like this. Loss, doubt, discomfort. The fishtail braid my hair was clawed, the sparking cuts in fast to hide, your traffic safety uncomplied, our genders parting into fours. Hinges make a tear in two by blocks on top of lines in three. Integration, understanding and discovery. In a living dynamic world such as ours, when the only thing that can be truly permanent is change, the art of successful stress control must inevitably include an ability to prepare for, accept and cope. Punctured worlds, doors drip into it, spray to leap for change. The circle repairs itself in two immaculate halves, opposites estranging themselves from one another. Smothered by a lodger, I've come to call you, whose face appears in my dreams. You'd like you, you scream, and you're sleeping mouldy dab through the constant anneal. When you're leaked upon your total care, a static line junk fatality cut away too low, reserve in line stretcher impact. In a living dynamic world such as ours, where the only thing that can be prudent is change, both my fingers tear in both the corners of my mouth, a concentrate with pectinase dismounting on the copula, alive in every kind of language going to die, the art of successful stress control must inevitably include an ability to prepare for the Except in code with change. Change, at firstassistonline.com, contains the subset redundancy, which, when navigated to, states the connection string property has not been initialized. I navigated to it time and time again, and almost all again, really fucking it up, being fucked over, being fucked and going to work, getting frisked after work, comprehending fucking work, coping with fucking working to fuck the fungible, tangible, collectible, aggregate cost of work till there's nothing of it left to shrill. You navigate again from home, doing your advice for work at work from home like this. You may be feeling relieved after months of uncertainty, undervalued and let down by an organisation that you've given years of your working life to. But fuck that kind of thinking too, negativity that depletes it. A story to tell. A story to tell. I am in a loving relationship, which I am very lucky to be in. But if that weren't the case, I might cast my mind back to 1982, at which point, on the corner of Albumen Road in Telford, I met a man called Scooth. Or was it Halifax? And in fact, Albumen Terrace. I was walking alone, so Scooth appeared. He was from Britain, with a British accent, and the first thing I knew about him was that he was suspicious. Business to business bull spot, neck this Milo Yiannopoulos, what spent all her wages on Yiannopoulos' book of poems, garbage and shit, kettling lights go on block. He wore a long overcoat and a Homburg hat, and I couldn't tell his age because all I saw were his keen eyes in the top of his wrist poking from his pocket. Reader, I married him. <laughs> we moved to the corner of, was it Telford? Reading? And Northampton. Civil partnerships came into fashion around 1986. Before that, bare hands in the snow, chuck snow at you, heady for the lever to industrial facilities men, Albion and Crescent. And each morning we had breakfast together. I'd sit there eating it in Yiannopolis. <laughs> Sorry. Scooth, Scooth uh, would sit across from me in his clothes, the only ones he wore, and he would read the paper. This is true. He'd read the paper until the two holes prized out, his eyes poking through them. He'd pick up the phone, speak in a low buzzing tone, his eyes darting back and forth, and his hat pulled down low so I couldn't hear what he said. <laughs> <laughs> but hair... <laughs> hair I hadn't seen, just the hat on him. In bed, he'd hide from me and... Your... Dad from Chelmsford, frontal left you in that room with him. His there remains, a cold hand in the wind tries to cut you up and fails. 
I explained everything to him. How my school had been, where it was, but sat on the floor to tell him. For he, beneath his coat, fingered a pistol. Perhaps that's what I suspected. He'd peep at me round the corners, so I filed them down. <laughs> I should have filed for a divorce. <laughs> I should have filed for a divorce. <laughs> but I filed the corners of the house. <laughs> and even then, I noticed a tiny rip in his coat where he was leaking. Now, why did he leak? <laughs> What was he on that he leaked something out of himself while he lived there looking suspect? A pause in the brief wind. A brief pause sets the wind on course to stop. And he peeled up at me. 72 Albumen Terrace. Then went all dead. Now bolt upright. Sweat there, your ponophobia for me hurts me. You, my fatigue man, make all the world quiet down. Make me not yours again. Having never loved like this, disposition makes for change. Reallocate to your father, who I met first with in the eyes of in a scream, who I now dream of when I'm far away from you. The further I am from you, the more vivid your father becomes in my dreams, and I find myself asking you silently from a great distance whether or not you ever dream of your father. But instead of actually asking you that, I ask you whether or not you ever find yourself feeling bored. Or rather, I don't do that because it's far easier to watch someone else do that and to nod and express my agreement with the question, with the line of the question. In my dream, your father wanted to meet with you and you with him. But as you often do, you started to fill the hole with minor wounds. I couldn't get you to agree to a time or a mode of address until your father came to us and put you into his car. The rest of the dream is gone. I woke up crying and shaking, and drank something strong and hot. I opened my eyes again, and you were still in them. I closed my eyes and moved backwards into the room. You were still in it. I was deflecting the absence of my will into the room around you. You wouldn't close your eyes. You were holding them open, and looking just over my shoulder, saying, Nothing at all. Trying to develop the social poetics of work and mental health can only lead to a cyclical resolution of grief responses. Wreck this goal of yourself to a sense of a melting, curating the hurt over and above yourself. Quality genesis of it floating and failing. When you do it, do it again. Do this to yourself. This time with a sensory falling off at the speed something falls off at. Do it. Falling apart and strobing. And he floated back into the room behind me, which was the room... I wanted to call my dreams where there is. You opened your whole mouth and made a noise. When I travel in the company vehicle, please ensure I put my seatbelt on. Staff are to check this whilst the vehicle is stationary. I put my fingers into the corners of my mouth and scream. Shining off the eyes of you, the eyes that broke them off, the eyes of me. The walls have a nothing in, a hole, a vista. They puke. Are the not walls crumbling, the institutional door as candor? Stop it. You found yourself disgraced on it. The whole of the schema, what I call it, the falling into the sea, the lovely sea, an obstacle to moving on to your new life, at the end of the challenge, circles back into shock, because everything is expressed in circles. Everything must be brought in circles because every directive for work has to deny each and every one of its contradictions by way of anomalous flow. If you turn your logics into a cycle, you can undo any one of them whenever you need to. Like the undoing of therapy, this book is like a fearful, pe fearful peal of thunder echoing out of the dim horrors of ancient tyranny, Judith. When I turned around in bed and I called out your voice, you began to threaten me. I'm in a lead despair. A mute one, arc, and shade of it, regress. 
the lovely Erolanda, her forehead on the viewer, a compensating fascist throwing orders in our sewer. Without a trace of empathy, we heard the unempathic, supposed by diagnostics, those voices in the attic. Each structure bolts the person to the person-centred core. Illness and instruction, our lives the metaphor. The care of vulnerability is fucked beyond its will. Craigmore gets its end away, the workers foot the bill. Rose was there at the hearing. The colliery tract was dumped in a line of redundancy at the door. You wandered over to the door. Institutions of doors and social hatred and reconciliations and the council down of doors breaking. So cave, where you found yourself still rocking gently, your whole skin a leaking tatter of wounds. <coughs> Burned, but not to death, when nine police officers moving around the crowd, when two men approach you, kick you neatly, and one has a bottle and he pours some liquid onto your body which is rocking, its arm and head reaching over itself, the lips melted closed and suddenly you are rocked once again into red flames and stand for a moment and fall back down. I watched you die while they killed you, where the end result is personhood, the gradual and gentle dismemberment of Tom Kitwood, Carl Rogers, nothing is forever. We are stuck. And another dream. You are constant to my dreams. In this one, I tried to intercept your life and save you before the manifestation of mixed personality disorder, as I imagined it. But first, there was the Bowie incident. The object of our hatred will not look at your eyes. And his face goes in, goes inside, and his head splits round, and for my hands, a hole opens for me at the back of his head, and the hole is full of light, which shows me to the stem, attaching his brain to his spine. I take a knife to it and hack through. The hacking is the last taboo in me. I feel sick as I do it. The key appears in my mind. It is the power source for a time movement, whereby once I can go back to you, when you stream from paradise, as close as I can be to intercept your primary trauma, psychoanalysis has been entirely incapacitated. Capacitated. It does not have the capacity to make safe decisions in the community. I find that previous to primary trauma, you are as you are, and I die there. Then seven, seven stations of failure. All of the angels I have heard, I have made. I have made their voices, and all the outside sounds, I have nothing. The dreams are local. Someone is standing by the door for hours at a time, gradually developing into their intended persona. As you become better at being a human, so you become better at bettering your humanity. And as you become confused, so your harmony drills to its derangement. I wanted to confess everything. When I was small, whilst you floated in and out of windows to expulsion, I had something taken from me that I didn't know I'd ever know I had. It was taken in a punishment routine. It was not yours. I was not burned to death. My skin never leaked like yours does. Your skin leaked every day, every time somebody sees it. I was forced to kneel on a carpet. Excuse me, a voice spoke, but you're leaking on me. You're burning me. Your skin is on fire and it is near me, so you burn me. Desist. It makes sense to say that the carpet was made from hessian that there was a thick, hard stone floor beneath it, which there was, it being in a very old building, a building boasting an historic view. I will never forget you. It is what no longer wanting to be alive is. No longer wanting to be alive is this. Not like when you take me to the point of death in ecstasy, remaining as our anchor in our love capitulates, but it is wanting to drop neatly out of the world. Wir können nicht aus dieser Welt fallen. We are both and all leaking. Our entire worlds are sprained. Again to the routine. I enter an uncoded door to an airlock and dispense my fingers into the code of the second door. The carpet I was on was outside an office. My hands were on the top of my head. What I wanted to tell them I had done was whatever it was that I undoubtedly had, and that the smell of resin and of sugar made entire to be there, and often to be in other places, 
to do unspeakable things in other corners of the sprained and leaking earth your eyes evade us from, sprained into two leaking fringes in a panoply of abject human skin in burning shreds. <coughs> Whether it can be said or not that I leaked, I did. Even as I state this, the statement behind it rests painfully under each knee. So for some kind of devotional clemency, my appeal and confession break out in the same breath, echoing and insulting the death rattles I've appropriated from within their historical lives. I will never forget you, Dan, but I will leave you, and I will remember that. The whole establishment, the institution pouring out into the little street. To the right, the sea. To the left, the main road. Ahead, houses. Thanks. <laughs>